right. Good morning, everyone. And good morning to our students online as well. Uh, shall we just begin this time with a word of prayer? Right. Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you that you've given us this opportunity to study your word. And we pray, God, that everything that we learn today um, throughout all the courses, oh God, that it will minister to our hearts. We, we pray, God, that, uh, Holy Spirit, you will speak to us in your own special way, oh God. Uh, we open our hearts, we open our minds, uh, and we just want to receive from you uh, this morning, oh God. We thank you. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So we've been covering quite a lot of material, especially in this topic, identity. Uh, last class we did chapter 16. We looked at how we are a new species. And then we also looked at chapter 17. And the Apostle Paul is what we talked about. Right, and how our identity was. We well, we were yet sinners. We were far away from God, uh, but now, after the cross, we are saints. We are justified. We are righteous. And throughout this course, uh, you will find these words coming up every now and then. Right, righteousness, justification. Uh, so don't get bored of those words. Right, those words are true. Those words are meaningful and impactful in our life, right? Okay, so let's go into chapter 18. We look at the new creation is the image of God, right? Now, what is what is image of what, what, what is the first thing that comes to my mind when your mind when we say image? Sorry, you said something? A picture, yeah, very good. What else? Sorry? Reflection, okay, very good. Yeah, both are right. right? It's true. It's a, an image is a is a picture or a reflection of who we are, right? Now, when we stand in front of the mirror, we see a reflection of us, right? It's an image of us. Now, the Bible is saying, the Apostle Paul is saying, as believers, in the natural, we may have the image of who? Our parents, right? But in the spiritual, we have the image of God. All right, let's read Ephesians 4.24. It's in your notes. Any one of us can read. Ephesians 4.24. And that you put on the new creation, new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Right. So in Genesis 1.27, it says that God created man in his own image. Right. Now, what happened after sin? That image was marred. Right. Think of this. Adam was without sin. There was no sin at all. God sat with Adam, met with Adam. There was no sin. He was made in God's image. But now, after sin came in, that image was marred, meaning sin entered. And let me ask you this question. I'll take a clean glass of water, okay? And I take one drop of drainage water. You see in the drainage, no, outside? So I take one drop of the drainage water and put it in this glass of water. And if I ask you to drink it, will you drink it? Why? But it's only one drop. The whole glass is clean. One, one small drop. Just, just a drop like this. We won't drink it because the entire glass is contaminated now. The whole water is contaminated. Adam, what did he do? Small sin. God told, don't eat, I ate. Okay, forgive. No, it's okay. But our image was contaminated. It was marked. You get the understanding now? Initially, Adam was clean. That one sin, it changed our image. It changed our identity. Right? So, what did he do? From being the image of God, we were subject to sin. Nobody teaches a child to sin. It's a natural thing. So, oh, from Adam, sin was it's a normal thing. Sin was there. We were born in sin, Paul says. 
but after becoming believers god restored us back to that image which adam had right adam had before he said we have the image of god right now right so we have his likeness and because we have his likeness we have his image in us now in christ we are brought into union with christ and so when when we look at ourselves we should when we look in the mirror we think okay this is how we are right we look at ourselves in the mirror that's who we are but what we must tell ourselves is hey i am in in the image of god why because now i'm not in sin maybe we have sinned maybe there are things that i'm doing wrong or i have not yet reached that level of maturity in christ jesus but that does not change the fact that you are in the image of god let me ask you one more question what does god say i am jehovah rafa the god who heals now how many of you have prayed for people and they've received healing i'm sure right many of them have received healing but how many times we've prayed and they've not received healing it's happened many times right it's happened to us also we are as pastors as leaders we pray for people they've not received we just encourage them because one thing we know and you and i should know is that god's identity does not change when he says i am jehovah rafa the god who heals that is who he is whether he heals us or no that is who he is it does not change when god says he's the creator he created the heavens and the earth now millions of people may come and say from the fish or from the species it became you know the world came into existence on its own they may say it but it does not change the fact that god created the heavens and the earth right so the same way we may be going through challenges in our life there may be areas in our life we have to improve we have to learn we have to uh, there are temptations we have to outgrow it but that does not change the fact that as believers you and i are in the image of god right now the apostle paul keeps saying that we grow in maturity we when we have the when we have this image of god we must make sure that we go back to god ask for forgiveness change our lives right that's our identity the new man is not according to adam the new man is not in the likeness of adam but the new man is in the likeness of god what is the likeness of adam he sin sin was in adam but now we are in the likeness of god right have anyone come and said to you hey you look like this person you look like your father and nowadays we have those you know people do this in social media right uh, they put the photo of the father and the son the father when he was 18 years old the son when he's 18 years old both look the same you know who's who hey you look like your father exactly the same and so now as believers we look like the father we look like jesus we we may not have appeared and all of that but our image who we are is like jesus was jesus sinful did he have sin inside him was he born of sin he was pure sinless and so we have that image in, in us we need to grow to that image as well right first peter chapter 1 verse 3 and 4 let's read that first peter chapter 1 3 and 4 it's in the notes you can read yeah. first peter 1 3 and 4 sorry two peter sorry go ahead as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises 
that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Mm, thank you. Right, so it says here, verse 3, let's break it up. His divine power has given us things pertaining to life and godliness. What does godliness mean? The word godliness means to live like a god. Right? A godly nature. Now, who gives us that? The verse in the beginning says, His divine power gives us the ability to walk in godliness, to, to through the knowledge of Him who called us by His glory and virtue. And then he goes on, verse 4, he says, partaking in His divine nature. Right. Everyone say nature. We all have different natures, no? Some are soft, some are harsh, some get upset, some don't get upset. That's our nature, right? Oh, some are very kind, some are very rude, some are very open, some, some of us are very quiet. So we have different natures, all of us. But the verse here says, we are partakers of His nature, Jesus' nature. What was His nature? Loving, kind, compassionate. He was also strict. He also made sure that he said what he had to say. He was not sorry for what he said. He was impactful. He was powerful. He was bold. He was strong. That's his nature in us. Right? Having escaped the corruption that the world that is in the world through lust. Right? 1 John 5:1. I'll read that. Whoever believes that. Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. That means the characteristics of Jesus can, we can walk in that characteristics of Jesus. Every characteristic, because his nature is in us. Right? This means we can walk in righteousness and true holiness. We can walk as the image of God, the carrier and the nature of God in our lives. So, for example, what did, what did Jesus do? The Bible says that he, was, he, he, he walked as a lamb, but he also was he's also the Lion of Judah. Right? So you see two characteristics there. There are times we'll have to be like a lamb. Can we think of any instance where Jesus was like a lamb? What is a lamb? It's soft. Right? When you take a lamb to the sacrifice, it cannot escape. A lamb is a very soft animal. Right? So remember when Jesus, they, they arrested Jesus. Right? They said, you are the one who's causing these problems. They arrested Jesus. What did he do? Like a lamb. What he could have done, he could have called a host of angels and said, wipe out all these people. Like a lamb to the slaughter. Think about places where he was like a lion. Think of this. He said, before Abraham was, I am. The people, the Pharisees and those Jews, the Sadducees and all those people said, they went to catch him. But they didn't touch him. It was like a lion. Even when on the cross, it looked like a natural defeat. But it was not a defeat. It was victory. He's a lion and he's a lamb. So there are times in our lives. Remember, we have that nature of the lion. We have the nature of the lamb. There are times we'll have to be like a lamb. There are times we'll have to be like a lion. When the enemy is coming, when the devil is attacking you, don't be like a lion, lamb. Don't be very timid. Oh, devil, please, can you come after two days? No, you be like a lion. Right? And then with, with believers, with, in the church, with our own community, with our friends, there will be times when people will persecute, people will mock you, people will ridicule you. Be like a lamb. Right? The nature of a lamb. Right? Uh, this is just uh, a sideline, but these are natures that we can walk in because we have the na nature of Jesus. 
right? He forgave, we can forgive. He loved, we can love, right? The same way that he loved, we can love, right? So let's go to chapter 19, talking about old things have passed away. Again, the, the verse that we always ponder on, the most powerful verse talking about our identity is 2 Corinthians 5.17. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. So what is this all things have passed away? Right? All things have no more right over us. Right? Now picture this. There is a person who has been an alcoholic for 20 years. Now, this is an example, right? 20 years. Anything, any, any sin, okay, or maybe even pornography. 20 years. Now, all of a sudden, he's become a believer. Right? So what's happened now? Old things have gone away. All things have become new. He's got a new spirit inside him. Now, the next day, he's waking up in the morning. He knows that he's a believer, but the mind is still not renewed. So the mind is saying, hey, for 20 years, you have been drinking, you start the day drinking alcohol. Yes, for 20 years you've done that. Instead of breakfast, you start with a drink. So get up, do it. The enemy, the devil is not going to take a break. Oh, he's become a believer. I will not disturb him now. No. He's going to come. 20 years you did it. You can't stop now. How can you stop suddenly? That'll what the, that's what the devil will say. Right? And many times we may fail and we may fall into that temptation. It's 20 years. But it says here that all things have passed away, which means that all things do not have a right over us. It's there, but it, did not have, it does not have a right over us. So we choose what to do. For the last 20 years, the devil was choosing what to do. You get what I'm saying? Right? The devil was telling us, you have to do this. But now, after 20 years, you become a believer. The devil will say, but you have the right to tell the devil, no. My identity is changed. Of course, there will be natural urges. But naturally, we'll feel like, oh, I have to. Yes, 20 years. But we can overcome it. Because the devil will try to convince us that this whole life we have, we will, you know, he'll, he'll try to convince us that you cannot let go of this old life. It's not possible. But you have to fight. You have to tell yourself, hey, all things have passed away. All things are new. Do I have the urge after 20 years? A person after 20 years of drinking, he may have the urge. That urge will be there. But you have the authority. Your identity is changed. We can just pray and say, God, help me. I'm weak. Right? Now, Jesus is not going to say, why are you so weak? Why are you, don't, why are you so weak? I've already given you Holy Spirit. He's not going to say that. Right? He knows our weakness. He himself says, hey, you call upon me, I'll answer you. In your weakness, you call me, I'm there. Cast your burdens on me. I will care for you. Jesus knows. He knows the weakness, so we go up to him, right? We can, we can say, okay, I reject the lie of the enemy. What is reject? Reject means, you know, when somebody is giving you something and you know it's not good, you'll reject it. Hey, I don't want it, right? That's reject. Reject is not to say, no, thank you. That's not rejection. Reject is to say, hey, get it out of me. Get it out of here. I don't want to see it, right? That's reject. And so we can reject the lie of the enemy. All things, whether it is spirit, soul, and body, they don't have authority over us. Now, the question is, why do believers still live in sin? Very important question, people ask. Why, why do they still live in sin? New nature is there, old things have passed away, Holy Spirit is there, our mind is renewed, everything is there. Why do believers, they are five years, ten years in the Lord, but still 
they are in sin. Now we cannot blame the, the Holy Spirit. We cannot blame anybody else but ourselves. See, for example, if I open the door for the devil to come, will he come or no? Or the devil will say, hey, no, you close the door. You're a believer. You close the door. Will the devil say that? If I open a door, the devil will say, thank you, and he'll come. Now, if there are doors in my life, I close it. He may try to open the door, but if it's still closed, good. He can say, devil, no, I reject you. I close every door that the enemy is trying to open in my life. I reject every lie of the devil. Right? The old man that is our sin nature that is, uh, or the sin that is dwelling in us was put to death. If something is dead, if sin is dead, cannot come back to life unless we allow it. So the reason why many believers, Bible-believing believers, they have a good heart. They want to serve the Lord. They have learned the word, by word of God. They have studied the word of God. They've done everything but living in sin. Why? Because we have opened the door. What is... Uh, in the book of uh, the epistle of, in, in, in I think it's first or second, second Peter, I think, he says, Do not give the devil an, a door lest he come in and take the entire space. See, if, 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 if there's a, this, this whole place is here, okay, and you take the devil and you tie him up and keep him in the corner here, right? You bind him up and keep him here in the corner. And every day you're here, you're doing your work, but slowly what's happening is we are, you know, for example, right? We're doing something wrong. Every time we're doing something wrong, it's like we're loosening his binds. Right? If we sin, every time we're losing the binds. And then slowly, one day he's standing there. Hey, where are your chains? I had bound you. No, it's, it's broken off. And then slowly, he's just standing there. And then over time, he comes, he takes over this space, this much. Then he'll take the other half. Then he'll take the entire space. He'll say, this whole place is mine. That's how it is in our heart, in our life as well. If I bind the devil, I got to make sure that I close every door. Right? Remember what the scriptures say? Be careful because the devil is like a roaring lion trying to devour. Right? Now, is a roaring lion scary? How many of you have seen lions? Have you seen lions? Have you seen it on the TV? In real? Yeah? Very good. You know, I, I, I remember seeing... For many years, I used to see these lions on the TV. But when I saw them close, I went for a safari many years ago. And we went into this lion reserve. And the lions were right there. I thought to myself, oh gosh, Daniel was in the lion's den. Because, you know, when they roar, it was echoing inside the car. I kept making sure that, you know, the door is locked. They were so huge. So, the, the, the roars. I thought to myself, the lion, the, the devil is like a roaring lion. He just brings fear. When the lion roars, fear comes in. Right? So, you and I are not subject to the devil. The devil will say many things, but you can say, no, I reject you. Now, what happens if we fall into temptation? It's okay. You get back up. You stand up again and say, Jesus... Please forgive me. His blood has paid the price. Yes or no? Right? There is no sin that Jesus will say, oh, you did it again. I told you don't listen to this. I told you don't. No. Go back to Jesus and say, Jesus, forgive me. I know my identity is still the same. I know you love me still the same. Help me to overcome this area in my life. Anoint me with your Holy Spirit that I may be strong. 
these are things we have to do right that nature is there but we have to do it right so do not limit your life to what was in the past but look at the future look at you know the potential that god can release through you right how many of you over here maybe even those who are online can uh, type in the chat but how many of you are here god is calling you to start your own ministry no oh, one yeah two yeah it's online also three you want to start your own ministry yeah gertrude has uh, raised right. and many of you want to serve right in some way or the other you want to serve god you want to minister to god now don't look at your current potential you may know two out of 10 things but there'll come a time when you know you you grow in spiritual maturity you will learn and learn and your spiritual level will grow more and more right? and we look at that in the uh, chapter 21 as well right we will grow our spiritual maturity will grow so if you think of it there could be things right in your life you may be very easily falling into temptation but a couple of months from now or six months from now you can say why this temptation is not even going to work on me why because your maturity you have grown up your level of maturity is increased yes or no right you're not still the baby in christ you know now the devil is not going to sit back he knows how to counter attack but then you also know how to counter attack right you go back to god's presence greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world yes or no what does the world have lot of things lot of desires lot of temptations but greater is he that is in me greater is he that is in you okay say that put your hand on your heart right and say greater is he who is in me greater is he that who is, that in, is me. in the world right? so when the devil comes with temptation you say hey greater is he who is in me Holy Spirit, you are inside me. You're greater than any demon or any temptation that comes. Right. We have to fight. All right, let's get to the next chapter. Chapter 20, all things are new from God. Let's read 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 18. We all know verse 17 by now, hopefully. So let's read verse 18. Now all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to him through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation right so verse 17 how many of you know 2nd Corinthians 5 17 by heart even if it's in your own language you know it by heart no okay you learn it okay it's very simple verse 2nd Corinthians 5 7 okay that's your homework it's been a long time since we talked about homework right second Corinthians 5 17 it's oh, you can learn it even in your but it'll be good to learn it in English right so uh, that just learn it right just learn that scripture by heart so by the time we complete this course you'll know okay hey if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation all things have passed away all things become new right so all things are new from God and everything about his about his, this new creation is from god the new creation does not have anything sinful when remember we talked about this the you know god is not repairing our old spirit but he's giving us a new spirit right he says this is a new spirit you have now right and so this new creation does not have anything sinful but it is our mind that needs to be renewed let's read Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 Romans 12 verse 2 it's not in your notes but 
to not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Yes. Right, Romans 12.2. Some of you are still opening. Have you reached there? Romans 12.2? Yes. So what does it say here? It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. What is the meaning of conform? Conform means to, to be like. Right? Do not participate with the world, the patterns of this world. Right? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So inside is a new spirit, but the transformation happens by the renewing of the mind. Now what happens when the spirit is new, but the mind is not renewed? He'll easily fall into temptation. Mind will say, no, you can't do it. You can't. You have to do this. You have to lie. You have to be jealous. How can he get and how can I not get? Or it could be pride. All of this is in the mind. And when it affects the mind, it enters our heart. You get what I'm saying? But the spirit inside us is not sinful. It is a pure spirit. Right? We don't have little of Adam nature, little of God's nature, little of our nature. No. All things are new. So we have to change the way we look at things, think about things, right? Uh, think about, now for example, it's very, it's very easy when somebody gets upset, right? We get upset, we, you may, you know, say something to your friend, right, in anger. Now it's very easy for, or your friend may say something to you. Now it's very easy for us to retaliate. Say, hey, but you are the one who did this. That is the pattern of the world. But God is saying, be, conform, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, meaning we have to change the way we think. Hey, he's getting upset with me. It's better I keep quiet. That's what the book of Proverbs says. When, when, when anger comes in or strife comes in, it's better to be quiet. Let me be quiet. At the right time, we'll resolve this problem. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the mind is not transformed, it gets into an argument, right? So like that, there are many other things. Let's go to verse 21, chapter 21, sorry. Growing into the full measure of the new creation. Now, our spirits have become new, but our human spirits must grow into this new creation. Now, we've talked about this before, right? So we, what are we? We are body. Or we are spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. So we are three-part being. What are we? Spirit, spirit, soul, body. What will happen to the body? Perish. So the spirit, soul remains. Right? Now, we have a spirit also. Right? The Holy Spirit comes inside us when we become believers. And the Holy Spirit ministers to our spirit. Right? How do we get a prophetic word? How do we get a word of knowledge? How do you know that God is speaking to you when you're reading the word or you're praying? It's because the Holy Spirit, and this is our spirit, when we become believers, they are together. Right? Now, what happens when we, when we don't have communion with the Holy Spirit? It's there, but there is a, there's no separation, but we are not able to hear him. There's no communion, right? Now, we must develop ourselves, our, our spirit, to hearing and being sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Just like how uh, like a baby is born into a family, uh, the baby grows, right? Initially, the baby won't know, OK, this is my brother, this is my sister. Will the baby know? The baby won't even know it's living in a slum or whether it's living in a palace. It's a baby. It doesn't care. It doesn't know anything. It doesn't have a mind and a thinking of its own. Now, as the child grows, two years, five years, six years, the child begins to understand, okay, this is the lifestyle. 
this is my lifestyle. I have to wake up in the morning. This is what I have to do. Begins to understand. As the child becomes 8, 10 years old, begins to understand, okay, there are things that I have to do. Right? And then 15, 20 years old. And then this person becomes, nobody takes, tells a 18 year old uh, adult, you know, when you have a, uh, if you have an 18 year old, go brush your teeth in the morning. Will you have to tell? You know, every day I tell my boys, get up, go brush your teeth, because they are small. Right? They're six years old. Go brush your teeth. Then go do it. Now, if I'm still saying go brush your teeth when they're 18 years old, something is wrong. Right? Because they should know they've grown into maturity. Right? Uh, I still put the uniform, school uniform for my kids and get them ready. No, I put the uni uniform. Now imagine they are uh, in 10th standard and I'm still putting their uniform. Doesn't make sense. Why? Why? Because they've grown up to a certain level. The same way our human nature must also grow. Our human spirit must also grow. Right? In the natural, we can, uh, we have an idea how a 10 year old boy, child looks, a 20 year old or a 30 year old, 50 year old. When we see, we we'll get an idea, right? The same way, when we look at spiritual growth, it is it is a way. It is not limited to you know, you know uh, time. For example, a person who's a believer for ten years, and a person who's a believer for one year. This person who's one year a believer can be more mature than who's ten years in the Lord. Yes or no? Right? So in the natural, it's different. But in, this, in the spiritual, it's different. Right? We have to grow in the Lord. Yes, spiritual maturity comes over time. But time and age does not determine spiritual growth. Right? Uh, I joined ministry when I was 22 years old. Right? Now, during that time, we had people coming. Now people will come up to me and say, pray for my family, pray for my children. Now, I used to think, what can I pray? I don't know. I don't know. Pray for my marriage. I'm not married. I don't know. I would just pray. Okay, pray. God bless their marriage. Right. Oh, bless their children, God. I was too young. I didn't know. I didn't understand. Right. But over time, I began to understand. When I was young, I would, you know, there were many times I did. I said things in, in a wrong way. I said things in a harsh way. And then I realized, hey, I should not have said it that way. So over time, we grow in maturity. right? But that does not determine. right? So you can have somebody who's in the Lord for 10 years, somebody who's just a believer for one year. This one person who's one year in the Lord can have a more intimate relationship with this other person who's 10 years in the Lord. right? You're getting what I'm saying? Right? So don't compare yourself, hey, this is a pastor, he's 10 years in the Lord. Doesn't matter. You look at your growth. You see how you can grow. Grow in the things of God. It says here in, let's read this next verse, Ephesians 4, 13. 13 and 15. Let's read. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the full, uh, fullness of Christ, but speaking the truth of in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ. Yes. So here Paul is very clearly talking about it. He's saying here, how do we measure spiritual maturity? How can we measure it? Now, in the natural, we can measure it. right? We can say, oh, hey, he's a 10 standard boy. By now, he should know that he has to wake up at 6 o'clock and get ready and go to school. He's in 10 standard. So we can measure natural in the natural maturity. But how do we measure spiritual maturity? Spiritual maturity is measured by the stature we have of Christ. 
the measure of stature we have in Christ. It says here, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to the perfect man, to the measure of the stature. That means what? Until we come to a level where we are walking like Christ, just like how Jesus walked, we are walking. Right? In, that means what? The new creation is growing up into Christ-likeness. The more we are growing into Christ-likeness, the more we are being spiritually mature. If we are not growing into Christ-likeness, what does it mean? It's still the same. If we are still getting upset over small things, if we are still getting jealous, angry, pride, hatred, still falling into temptations very easily, what does it say? We are not yet growing into the measure of Christ. We need to grow, right? And this Christ-likeness affects our mind, will, and emotions. That is our soul. It affects our body. That is our actions and the way we behave. It affects us, right? Growing up into Christ-likeness is to grow up in the knowledge of Christ. Everyone say the knowledge of Christ. The knowledge, knowledge of Christ means knowledge means we we must understand what we are in Christ. The knowledge of who Jesus is, what he did for us. What did Jesus do for us? If somebody comes and asks you, what did Jesus do for you? What are you gonna say? He died for your sins, okay? That's all. What else did Jesus do? Sorry? Pastor, he has given us eternal life. Sorry. Sorry, Gertrude. Can you repeat that? He has given us eternal life. He has given us eternal life. Okay. So, so somebody asks you, tell me, what do you think of, what, what is the knowledge of Jesus Christ that you have? What is it? Of the knowledge of Jesus. Yes, he's given us eternal life. What will you say? Remember, we are studying in lifestyle evangelism. You can say it. everything you can say. He was God. He was there before the foundations of the world. He looked at our sins. He came into this world. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross. He took my sins. And he just didn't die. But he resurrected from the dead. And after he resurrected from the dead, he didn't say, okay, I'm alive now. But he's given us his nature, his spirit in us. The knowledge of who Jesus is. Of his will. Of his purposes in our life. The knowledge of his will is very difficult, no? We all have that prayer request. God, I don't know what your will is for my life. Please reveal your plans for me. Right. But the biggest plan that God has for us is to be his child. And out of that flows all these ministries. Pastor, teacher, apostle, working, and working professionals, whatever it is. But the most important knowledge is what? To know your identity. To know who you are in Christ. Out of that flows everything else. Right? That is growing in the knowledge. The eyes of the spirit, which means our, we must have revelations of who God is, of what he has done for us. And revelation is something that is keeps increasing. It never stops. Right? Revelation will never stop. It will get better. It will get bigger. It will get greater, more and more and more. Every time we come into worship, supernatural hour, ask God, God, speak to me. I'm going to sing these songs, but you speak to me one thing. Say any one anything you speak to me. And I know it is you speaking. That's a revelation. There's a difference between knowledge and revelation. Let me give you the best example. Before I was uh, you know, before I was married, I would preach John 3:16, God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish. Full intensity, full anointing, everything. 
But after I had my son, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So now from knowledge, it has become revelation. God, you gave your son. Am I willing to give my son? No ways. But you gave your son for me. That becomes, that's knowledge. God so loved the world he gives. When it becomes a revelation, it changes our thinking. It changes our mind. It changes how we look at what God did for us. There are many of you, or most of you are not married. But when you have a child, when you get married, when you have a child, you will understand John 3.16. It will become revelation in your heart. Amen? Right? Then you'll understand. Oh, this is what Jesus, this is what God was talking about. What kind of love is this that God gave his son for me while I was yet a sinner? Becomes revelation. Right? Second Peter 3.18 but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. So we are also to grow in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in the New Testament, the word grace refers to at least three things. First one, everyone repeat after me. God's favor. God's, favor. God's character. God's character. God's empowering. That's strength, right? So grace, Lord, I thank you for your grace. We pray, no? That means three things. God's favor, God's character, God's empowering. So God wants us to grow in all of this. His abundant, unlimited grace to fill our hearts, to fill our lives. Right? What would it look like? This is a question we can ask ourselves. What would it look like if we truly walked in the identity that God has given us? We would be so powerful that the devil would have no authority. The devil is already defeated. We would be so powerful. But the best part is we are growing into that. We are growing into that. Right? So we'll stop here. And next class, we'll pick up from section three, being righteous and justified in Christ. Right? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you to our online students as well. God Thank bless you very you. much, sir. Thank you. God bless.